Hello everybody and welcome along to a brand new video and today it's a video that I haven't really been doing very much of recently, reviewing the new series of Doctor or the newer New Who as it were, um, and I thought off the back of the Megan Reacts for Waters of Mars that came out, came out on Saturday, last Saturday, go check that out if you haven't already because it's definitely worth a big watch I would say, um, I really felt I just wanted to give a proper in-depth sort of analysis of this episode, or a proper review of it because for me, I think it's quite possibly my favourite RTD story ever. It, I really think it is one of the best Doctor Who stories there's ever been. Yes, I don't think it's quite the number one all-time greatest story ever, but it's certainly right up there. It just seems, it sort of feels like it has every single element to a story to make it brilliant. It's got a great villain, it's got a great setup, it's got a great resolution, it's it's dramatic, exciting, tense. It's got everything thrown in there to make a fantastic story, a fantastic special episode as well as it was a sort of autumn-ish special in I think October, November 2009, um, sort of before the end of time was aired. And it, I think just everything in this story clicks. Russell nails the script completely. David does an amazing job as with his performance, the sort of the t becoming the timeline victorious and him sort of losing his mind a little bit. Um, it's just so brilliantly done across the board. Right from the off it sets it out straight away where we get this really, we get fairly early on this sort of ominous scene where the Doctor stumbles across this um this Bowie Base 1 and then realises that all these people are about to die today and it straight away becomes a little bit dark in that regard, it is quite a dark story overall and straight away it sort of sets up that what's obviously going to be explored later in the episode of what things can, can and can't be rewritten in history and this is... Yeah. Rewriting history is always a difficult thing in Doctor Who because it's like it can be done but for some reason, some moments, it can't be done. And I can kind of understand why this one isn't done because it had to be that Adelaide died so that her daughter would, or granddaughter I think it was would then go into the stars and properly do space colonisation and everything like that in the future. Um, and that's that, that sort of I think reasonably justifies it but it's still always a little bit wishy-washy with some moments are fixed, some moments aren't just because they are, I just know that they are because they are is about the best explanation we get on screen so but it's okay it doesn't really affect the episode for me. But after that setup we then get the sort of introduction or this the, this mysterious water creature that's possessing all these people um, and gradually sort of going through and taking out the crew I mean the idea of water being the villain essentially is just a brilliant idea because you can't escape water, water's always there, it's always so easy to sort of catch it or get a drop of it on you and the fact that one drop killed you essentially is such a clever idea. And their idea of wanting to invade the earth which is 70% water is brilliant as well, you infect the water that they are and they're 70% of, we all have to drink it, we all die. It's, 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 a, it's actually a sort of alien with a great plan even if we don't really hear the alien sort of speak very much. She speak, it speaks a little bit through one of them, one of the, one woman, I can't quite remember her name but most through most of this story it's very much just this sort of ominous threat that's take, gradually possessing and taking over people rather than a, a sort of proper bit of dialogue with the villain that we get in some other stories. But I don't think that's a problem, I think that works to its credit. And as you saw if you're watching um, on the reaction video with Megan to this story that it, it very much has its, it's very tense and exciting, it's quite scary, she described it as a sort of horror movie almost which I think is maybe taking a little bit too far but it's certainly not far off being that, it definitely sort of has its very, it's very much that, that as I said that idea of sort of people being possessed and then you're being chased down through corridors by these possessed almost zombie like creatures um, who are trying to sort of infect you with the disease that they've got. It does have all those elements of a sort of horror film and really just makes it a very tense and exciting story that you're always on the edge of your seat for I think. One of the things that I was actually thinking about watching this again that I hadn't really thought about before was the uh, the whole um, the way that it's there's so many different nationalities represented it's a very sort of global crew on Bowie Base 1 which would be exactly what it is in real life in the future or even now with some of the sort of space missions and whatnot they're always very very much globalised and with people from very different nations and cultures and different countries and everything coming together because that's where you can get you that's just that just seems normal and natural that on a different planet you'd put you'd get people from everywhere together and I was just sort of thinking of the comparisons back to what I'm watching at the moment in the classic series having just come through the Patrick Troughton era and looking at stories like the moon base and the tomb of the Cybermen where again it was that very sort of um lots of different cultures in sort of a world worldwide um, crew involved and so it was sort of right from the 60s onwards in Doctor Who they've always been very forward in that sense of 
not every space crew is all Americans or all British people. It's going to be a very wide range of people from Russia or Asia and just different places are sort of across the world. And so I think that works really, really effectively in this story again. And just, I think, to some degree, gives it a little extra scale, just keeps you interested, makes the characters without, not in a racist way, but makes them more defined because you do sort of, you notice that's the Australian one. That's that, and just, just picking out those different nationalities, that's the Russian one. You pick out those different nationalities and it's easier to sort of just remember those characters, I think. And I don't think that's, that's, that's a negative way of describing it. I think that helps the story in a sense and just, as I say, creates that great sort of global culture in this episode, which is brilliant, I think. This story also has this, the brilliant moment with Adelaide and the Doctor when um, she's describing how a Dalek came down to see her. Um, obviously, it, it was kind of the one scene that has spent the next 10 years reinforcing the, um, the Daleks have to appear in every single year of Doctor Who because they were in that five minute scene um, in the waters of Mars which ticked their supposed contractual obligation to be in Doctor Who every single year or calendar year of the show but then that was kind of knocked out of the park in 2018 when there was not a single episode or anything in 2018 on television with the Dalek in so how, where do we square that up I don't really know but yes it's just a brilliant scene a brilliant callback of course to, to the Stolen Earth and Journey's End the series 4 two-part finale just able to sort of explain give give Adelaide a little a bit more backstory and showing how important a person she is maybe as I mentioned earlier actually giving more sort of credit and understanding to this whole this moment in time can't be rewritten because Adelaide is such an important person she a Dalek chose not to kill her maybe well, maybe chose not to kill her or of course it's entirely possible that it just that that Dalek just got a command and therefore flew back up to its ship it just took a little bit longer looking at her and then decided okay I'm gonna fly up back to the ship now we got a command it could be that but it could also be as it's sort of posed in the episode that it's that Adelaide that the Dalek somehow knew that Adelaide was going to be a really important human being in the future and that it couldn't change that sort of moment in history that moment in time because of course the Daleks have traveled through time they they have an element of understanding of that concept even if they're not consistently time traveling um, and so it can sort of like kind of explain that but it just makes for a really sort of beautiful and heartwarming moment and also with the Doctor throughout the early parts of this story having to kind kind of pretend but kind of not pretend that he knows what's going to happen to them all it's not he doesn't do a very subtle job of it it's, it's kind of like a sort of paradox of him he wants to tell them but he also knows he mustn't tell them so he kind of half tells them but doesn't because he can't help himself but want to try and make him aware that they're all going to die um, and obviously can't quite bring himself to leave ultimately. We get that wonderful scene again with the Doctor and Adelaide where the Doctor has to explain to Adelaide that she is going to die and then that's the only option that he, there's nothing he can do and Adelaide sort of accepting that and understanding that and then sort of allowing the Doctor to be able to walk away um, and head off back to the TARDIS. It's just such a such an emotional moment again where, where this woman realises that her life is about to end, that's it, that she's got to sacrifice herself because that's that's fixed history, that's going to happen. Um, and it just it just makes yeah, it's a really sort of a dark, quite a heavy storyline, but I think such a brilliantly crafted story. And then the few minutes after that are some of, quite possibly some of my favourite sort of scenes and moments in Doctor Who, where we see three, I think it's either three or four of them, all get infected by the flood in the space of a couple of minutes, just showing the sort of absolute destructive power of the flood, that literally this one drop of water, you just can't escape water, it keeps coming through and then it's just bam, 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 it takes out four of them, while the Doctor's hearing it all over his sort of intercom, in his, in his space suit as he's walking away from, from it all, hearing them all suffering and dying. And it's, it's really heavy, it's really dark as I say, but it's just so brilliant and really just kind of just pushing the Doctor more and more and more and more and more and just sort of just seeing that moment where he suddenly realises that, that he can't take it, he can't deal with all these people just dying, he's going to have to jump back in and save them. And that moment of realisation that the timelines are all gone now, it doesn't matter anymore, they're all dead. I'm the only one left, I can take control of this, I can do whatever I like, it doesn't matter, I'm the one in control now. And then it's just this, this sort of moment where the Doctor appears again, Is he's lost it, he's gone off his hinges, he's, 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 he's gone too far as we hear sort of described later on, that he's made that mistake. Um, he's just kind of overcome with emotion and, and, and doesn't want to die as well as we see with the three knocks moment as well a little bit a couple of minutes later but he's just becoming the time of victorious as he describes it. And yes with those scenes just the music as well just combines perfectly to create the real, that, that, that brilliant dark atmosphere, that ominous atmosphere, that then that triumphant atmosphere, but also with a tinge of sort of darkness in there as the Doctor comes through to save the day, but you can tell that certainly Adelaide's not very happy about it because she knows she has to die, but actually she does have to die, and then we see that when they get back to Earth, of course it's all over, the Doctor thinks he saved them, it's all happy days, they can all go off, be happy, you've got your life saved, and Adelaide's just, just realises that she can't, or that she's got to, she's got to put it right herself because she's seen this man who's gone crazy essentially um, trying to save her because he's just felt this sort of guilt and moral obligation to do it and like he can just do it now because he's a bit mad and powerful 
um, and then Adelaide, Adelaide realizes that she she doesn't want to sort of change completely change the future. It could be critical and destroy so much future history if she doesn't die. And so to take the courage to be able to go and kill herself is is again a really dark thing for Doctor Who. I think I'm pretty sure there is there well there's very little suicide in Doctor Who. It's not a topic that's tackled at all. Of course, it's it's very much just hinted at rather than clear when we just sort of see her go inside, shut the door, and then hear a bang. But we know what's happened. We know she's killed herself, and it's it's then just you see that just moment where the Doctor spins round on his face and he just drops to the floor and he realizes what he's done that he has he has driven someone to suicide by trying to save them that he can't he can't become the time of victorious that's not his role that's not what he can do yes his people are gone and he's the only one left but he can't just sort of rage against the universe and try and save people and do whatever because there are still laws that even when the time laws aren't there those things he can't just completely change and so Oh, it's just such a brilliant idea to, to, to give this sort of a doctor. I think it just works so brilliantly for David Tennant's doctor to be able to take on that he's always been, without without one to sound negative, quite a vain doctor, quite in love with himself, but also quite an emotive and human doctor and always feeling real compassion for, he, for the human race, more so than other, some of the other doctors, I would say. And so that just it just all built up to drive him to this point where he goes over the edge and that, that he just he just becomes that that crazy, mad Time Lord Victorious that's just can't he can't be he just can't be it and then of course this story concludes with the with the doctor seeing the ood across across the sort of road and realizing that is his time maybe up now and sort of realizing his mistakes but then also as we see when he gets back into the tardis this reinforcement of this him being vain and not wanting to die when he's when he just says a simple no but in such an ominous tone that he's he knows he has to die and that he's going to die very soon but he also doesn't want it and was going to try and fight it off so so much as we see in the end of time of course throughout that story his desperation to fight off the regeneration and not not and just not regenerate because he doesn't want to lose this person it feels like dying for him as he describes in the next story and that he loves he loves he loves being David he loves being David Tennant essentially he loves being the 10th Doctor why would he want to change that why does he have to change that he feels like the universe owes him something I think to a degree and it just obviously gets continued to explore in the end of time and this this feels almost this the ending of the story is very much a prelude to what we get in the end of time but as as an overall story the waters of Mars is just incredible it's a, it's a based on the siege story so it's got quite a simplistic idea behind it ultimately but it's probably one of the most well realized based on the siege stories you'll ever see with the added sort of added excitement and the extra sort of um challenge of having the doctor become the time of victorious right at the end and all the challenges faced about it being a fixed point in time F focusing on the idea of fixed history and and things like that is just so brilliant and so clever and so effectively done i really do think it's quite possibly as i said russell t davies best episode and right up there probably in my top 10 best ever doctor who stories as i think i mentioned with megan it's not the sort of story that i could watch every week because it is quite dark and heavy but it is a brilliant story as a script, as a as a piece of drama. It is incredible. I really can't rate it high enough. But what about you guys? Do you think The Waters of Mars is also one of Russell's best, one of Doctor Who's best, or is it not quite doing it for you? What do you think about the whole Time of Victorious idea that's explored in this story? Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments below. But that's just it from this little review that I'm doing this week. Next week, or in a couple of weeks or so time, I will be attempting what I'm sure will become a rather controversial um, video as I'm going to attempt to defend the end of time. Because I know people hate it, I know a lot of people hate it, but I love it. I think it's a brilliant story, it's just an epic crazy finale to the David Tennant and the Russell T Davies era. I think it's amazing and I will be telling you all about why I think that very very soon. But other than that guys remember that like button, subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you again very soon for another one. Goodbye!